This is why you have to build up the power. Okay, well, two integrals on the spot, and this time we are going to create our integrals again. We already have the integrals of 1 over x to the 6th power plus something right here. We don't know yet, okay? So it's just like the last video, but this time we have the empty spot down here. And the deal is that we are trying to think about what to add here and there so that these two integrals will be reasonably doable, okay? So that way we can maybe put them on our calculus to find final exams, okay? And here's the rule. We are not going to put down plus zero, nor plus x to the sixth power, okay? For obvious reasons. But anyway, I'm going to leave this to you guys for now and just try to be creative. And once you have an answer for this one and try to do another one as well. And of course, don't forget to solve them, okay? Okay, now, we have 1 over x to the 6th power plus something. This is a power function, x to the 6th power. And here, let me just tell you guys this. If you want to integrate 1 over x to the 6th power plus 1, this right here is going to be really, really long, okay? Because you have to do a very hardcore and marathon style partial fraction for that. But in fact, I'm going to do that for you guys by the end of this year, okay? And palpable math, if you're watching, this is going to be for you, okay? But anyway, now, now, I'm not going to do this one yet. Well, the idea is that we already have x to the 6th power, okay? I want to add something else right here. Of course, I don't want to add like, e to the x or like ln x. I want to add like, just x to some power, okay? <laughs> so, I have a choice. Maybe I can add x, x squared, x to the third power, x to the fourth power, x to the fifth power, etc., etc., right? But we cannot use zero. We cannot use uh, x to the sixth power, right? And of course, I don't want to put the x to the seven or the eight, but I think those exponents will be too big. Let's just try to pick up uh, something right here, okay? Hmm. X to the sixth power plus x to the fifth power. I can factor out x to the fifth power right away. And then you will see it's actually pretty straightforward from here because we can just do partial fraction. Okay, so for the first one, I would like to just add x to the fifth power. On the other hand, for this one, let's see. Suppose I want to do x to the sixth power plus x to the second power, all right? In that case, I can only factor out x squared and then x to the fourth power plus 1, right? This right here, you can keep factor it, but the partial fraction for this is also going to be pretty horrible as well. Likewise for x to the third power, and then in fact x to the fourth power, okay, maybe it's reasonably doable, but um, no, I don't want to do it. In fact, I would like to show you how to do the integral 1 over x to the sixth power plus just an x right here, right? And yes, you might be wondering, okay, we can only factor out x, and this is x to the fifth power plus one. At the moment, you can keep factoring this out. Let me leave this for now, right? On the contrary here, you see, I have x to the sixth power plus x to the fifth power. This is x to the fifth power, x plus one. So it's a nice balance, huh? So let me do this two integrals for you guys. We have the x to the fifth, there, and then this is x to the first. And you'll see two very different styles of doing these two integrals, right? First of all, this is the, the easier one because we just do partial fraction. And the partial fraction is not going to be a killer. Well, you may, you may disagree, but we'll see. Here we go. This is 1 over, let's do this in blue pen, all right? <laughs> x to the fifth power times x plus 1. And here is the idea. x to the fifth power means we have five of the x's together and multiply them, right? But each x is the linear, namely x to the first power. In that case, when you set out the partial fraction, you have to build up the powers. So namely, I will have to have x to the first power to start with. And then on the top, I will have to have a constant. So I'll just put on a. And then the next one, I will have to you know, keep going up. So it will be x to the second power. And then another constant, when we build up powers, the top will have to stay to be the same kind, all right? So constants, constants, and then next one plus x to the third power, another constant, and then 
x to the fourth power another constant, and then x to the fifth power one more constant. And then at the end, you see, I went from x to the first power all the way to x to the fifth power. I'm done, right? But don't forget, we still have this guy, x plus 1. So that's just a linear factor, x plus 1. On the top, I need to have another constant because that's linear. And I know, I know, you don't have to go down and comment why this is the case because I'm going to explain that to you guys, right? So this is the simplest way to do the partial fraction for integration purpose, right? This is the simplest setup. You could also have done the following. This right here, well, if you want to look at this as x to the fifth power times x plus one, that's fine too. So if you do that, you have x to the fifth power plus something x plus one. This is fine. And the idea is that if you want to do partial fraction, once you have the denominators, the top always have to be one degree less than the denominator. And it has to be exactly one degree less than the denominator. And you may ask why one degree less? Because suppose if you have x to the fifth power right here as well, you can do long division already, right? Do a long division, so you can kill the x to the fifth power right here. So the deal is you just need to have a degree less, so you can just like a you know, it's like a proper fraction, that kind of thing. Anyway, let me just do that for you guys right here. One degree less, that means I need to have x to the fourth power. So I will begin by saying ax to the fourth power. And then don't forget, you have to have all the terms ready so that you can include every, all the possibilities. Next one is going to be bx. Second power plus bx, second plus bx plus e, right? And then this guy, it's just uh, another constant on the top. Look at, for this one, you have this huge thing right here, right? But the good thing is that we only have x to the fifth on the denominator. So imagine, I can just split this, right? So you see, this is a, a x to the fourth power over x to the fifth power, and then plus b x to the fifth power. I think you guys know the deal already. But let me just finish writing this down, otherwise it's going to be bothering me. So yeah, y, now it's x to the fifth power, and at the end, you still have the f over x plus 1. Once again, 1 degree less than the denominator, but of course, you don't want to look at this, right? Because if you split this, <laughs> you have like five little fractions. And what's the first term right here? You see, x to the fourth cancel with this, so you have one left. Aha, that's a over x to the first power. Likewise, for the second term, x to the third cancel with this, you have two right here, right? So that's b over x squared. And likewise, at the end, here we have e over x to the fifth power, and then this right here states, right? This is why you have to build up the power. And even though the denominator is just x to the fifth power, but sometimes when you have, let's say, you know, five over x plus one to the third power times, I say, x, whatever, you still build up power in this thing, right? Maybe that's put on two. You still build up power as a over two x plus one plus b over 2x plus 1 squared plus c over 2x plus 1 to a third power. And lastly, don't forget this guy. And yes, we always have to have like two different kinds of factors. Otherwise, this right here, you can do it by u sub already. But anyway, build out the powers, right? That's the deal. Okay, so that takes care of that issue. And now, we have to find out the a, b, c, d, e, and f. I'm not going to do cover up. Although we could for E and F, but you know, let me just show you guys the traditional way because it actually works out pretty well as, as well. So here is the deal. We will multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, namely x to the fifth power times x plus one, all right? Now, take this, multiply by that, we have one. And of course, we are just going to multiply this out. Okay, this is actually not bad at all, because you see, on the left-hand side, we only have a constant 1. And on the right-hand side, we have this, like a 5th-degree polynomial. And if you look at, we have a x to the 5th power along with the f x to the 5th power. Namely, this coefficient a plus the f it has to be 0, because we don't have any x to the 5th power on the left-hand side. So that's the first condition that we have, must have, a plus f has to be equal to 0. And then next, ah, this here is the beauty, because, because you guys can see, 
this is ax to the fourth power plus bx to the fourth power. We don't have x to the fourth power on the left-hand side, so that means a plus b has to be zero. E has to be the same as one, right? And in Chinese, I will say E is the same as E because the Chinese pronunciation of one is the same as E. I'm serious. But anyway, E is equal to E. That was, you know, E is equal to one, anyway. So this is pretty nice because now we know E is equal to one and we can just go back. So that means D has to be what? D has to be negative one, isn't it? And then you go back. D is negative 1, C has to be what? C has to be 1. And likewise, if C is equal to 1, B has to be negative 1. Plugging back right here, that means A has to be positive 1. Lastly, A, F, I mean, because A is 1, F has to be negative 1. Woo! Oh my god, that's the deal, right? So, you can just plug in numbers, A is equal to 1. It's alternating, look at that, so cool, right? And then C is equal to 1. B is equal to negative 1, and E is equal to 1. And f is equal to negative 1, right? So that's the deal, right? Now, of course, we have to integrate all these guys. So here is the final work. We'll finish it right here. The integral of 1 over x to the 6th power plus x to the 5th power dx is the same as integrating each terms individually. For the first one, let me just write it as 1 over x. And then for the next one, it's the same as saying, let's do minus, right? Because we have the negative here. Minus, and let's write this as x to the negative 2 power because we can use the reverse power rule, right? And for this one, we add x to the negative 3 power, and this one is minus x to the negative 4 power plus x to the negative 5 power, and then this right here is minus 1 over x plus 1, right? And you know, I keep the x to the first power, likewise x to the first power plus 1, both of them in the denominators because they will give us the ln functions. Here we go, this is going to give us natural log, right? ln absolute value of x. And don't forget to check the derivative of x is just 1. So you divide it by 1, doesn't matter. So it's just L and x. Here, we have to add 1 to the power. So this is going to be negative 1, right? Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And then divide it by negative 1. Fourth power. And lastly, this is just a minus an innocent natural log of x plus 1, right? The derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so divided by 1 doesn't matter, so you don't have to do anything right here. And that's it. So you put a plus c right here, right? So this is not that bad. As I said, the numbers worked out pretty nicely. Now, how about this guy? Earlier, I only factored the, the x out. x is equal to x to the fifth power plus 1. In fact, you can factor more, but <laughs> if you factor more, this factor is going to be pretty horrible as well, right? So let's think about this, right? Sometimes we can factor out the smallest exponent, which we did, that was x to the first power, but sometimes we can also try to factor out the biggest exponent, and sometimes maybe you know, good things will happen. We don't know until we try. Now, why don't we try to factor out x to the sixth power? In that case, originally you have x to the sixth power, I factored the L, so now this is going to be a one. Originally, you have x to the first power, I factor 6 out. Well, I factor x to the sixth power out, I owe 5 of them, right? So that means I will have plus x to the negative 5. Yeah? And here is the deal. You see that we have an x to the sixth power on the denominator. And you know, we have been doing a lot of them already. So this is the same as saying, why don't I do it backwards? Bring this to the top. That becomes x to the negative 6 power, right? And then the bottom here is 1 plus x to the negative 5th power. Can we do this easily? Yes, because you have seen my first part of this video, right? Now we can actually just use u sub. So let u equal to the denominator only, 1 plus x to the negative 5th power. And right away you can differentiate this, you get bring this to the front, minus 1, this is negative 5, x to the negative 6, and you have the dx right here, of course. And let me just divide this to both sides, so I can isolate the dx right here for you guys. And we will have du over negative 5, x to the negative 6. And the reason I have to do this is so that this constant, we know to divide or to multiply, right? So try to isolate the dx whenever uh, you don't see this right away. 
we'll have to divide this out later on. But anyway, let's take this integral into the u world, but I will actually separate these two right now. This is going to give us the integral on the top, we still have x to the negative 6 power. On the bottom, it's just u, right? dx is this now, which is du over negative 5 x to the negative 6. And what can we do right here? Use the blue pen, of course. Cancel this out. And we have 1 over negative 5, so that's negative 1 over 5 in the front. And then we have the integral of 1 over u du. In another word, this is going to end up to be negative 1 over 5. This is the you know, ln, absolute value of u, right? du, no, just kidding. Plus c, no, you don't have two. Because at the end, we are, we're actually done. This is negative 1 over 5 ln. What's u? u is 1 plus x to the negative 5. So let's put that down. 1 plus x to the negative 5. That was for the u, right? And this is for u as well. Do I need to put down parentheses for absolute value? Absolute value, because this right here could be negative, right? So we need to keep the absolute value. And at the end, I will touch the plus c, and this is it, okay? And hopefully, you guys like these integrals, and especially the idea of coming up with your own integrals, especially if you're a teacher, you know, or maybe you're a student, you can also try to do these kind of things, so you can you know, really enhance and improve your integration skills, and that's what I do too. Anyway, that's it.